Ah! Ah, oh, the heat. We're well and truly into a heat wave here in the UK. And it's really, really dry. It's the kind of heat where you don't pee so much as you whistle like a kettle. It's the kind of heat where you find cats and dogs marking their territory with bits of chalk instead of the more traditional fashion, so small blessings, I guess. Anyhow, welcome back to this rusty play of Demon Souls. And yes, you can see by the frame where it drops the emulator, does not like this level. So many open flame sources and particle effects to render. So I kind of have to look downwards to get a decent frame rate. So I look, actually, okay. As long as I don't keep too many objects in camera at once, it seems to be okay. When I start looking at a lot of light sources, it tends to freak out, start dropping frames. No, oh well. I don't recall the actual level in the game. I'm, I'm about to boot up my PS3 just to see if the actual um, Tavlatria used to dip like this. I have suspicion it might have done. FromSoft games are kind of infamous for being... How can I put this? Not today, son. For being uh, overambitious when it comes to lighting and particle effects. To the extent that they end up killing their own games. To the extent they end up having to retrofit their own games. Sometimes drastically altering them from the promised product. Yes, I went there. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anyone's actually seen uh, the mod news about that. There's a chap who's been working for like the past couple of years to essentially rebuild the look um, of the lighting system that was promised originally for Dark Souls 2. He's done quite uh, quite impressive work, I think. He's not just stuck in um, some exaggerated lighting like I've seen some people do with mod attempts. He genuinely worked to try and redo the shadow system in Dialy. And also redone a bunch of like the texture colours and filtering to give each area of the game a slightly more unique look. My god, that's a big heart. Yes, I'm sure you're very giving, but you give off of demons, and we don't want demons around here. We're full up on demons, we have enough demons. The line must be drawn here. Here and no further. When we say enough demons. Old spice, nice. Always do with more deodorant, especially in this weather. So yes. Okay. It is weird, like, some areas of the game, or some areas of the level, rather, where the game's having absolutely no trouble. Well, I'll say the game, the emulator, is having absolutely no issues whatsoever. That can literally, like, turn a corner and suddenly chug city. It's really, really bizarre. I don't know how this is going to turn out, because, like, even though the game only plays at 30 FPS, I've got the FPS unlocked. I don't think it really matters for Demon's Souls per se, because the game is hardwired to only run at 30 FPS. So I don't know... I don't know what benefit per se telling the emulator I don't care if it goes above that really gives me, but... And I render these, I both record and render this footage at 60. Which I think sort of shows in some areas. Like when I'm doing, like I'm just panning the camera and stuff, it really shows, it makes the camera look smoother. It doesn't do anything to the actual character animations and such because they're all rendered at 30 at max anyway. And just weird things so like some of the slowdown and chugging sort of... Instead of it jerking, it just tends to go into a very smooth slowdown, which is an interesting effect. That's not what I see, I see like a weird jerky motion. Come back down here. No, it's you then. I'm gonna take all your stuff and leave. Nope. It's all the Moonlight Stone that I don't think I need. So I have no plans to make a magically enchanted weapon. Like, at all. <laughs> oh well. It's good to have, just in case I do change my mind and someone decide I want to do that. I've still got a bunch of Dragonstone and that Longsword that... I've been debating whether or not to actually try and utilise the Fire Longsword, just to see what it does. I mean, like I said, there's at least one level of the game, level 5. Yeah, as valid farm at level five. Um, we're having a fire weapon could actually be quite useful. Interesting. I couldn't remember whether the heart creature actually caused any damage if you approached it or reacted at all. Let's see, it doesn't react in the slightest to your pokes. It didn't take damage. I suppose that makes sense. If it actually took damage, there would be someone. It'd probably be me as well. You would have the patience to just sit there smacking it for hours just to see if it was possible to kill you without doing what the level intended you to do. <laughs> so 
it's like the uh, the dragons. All the dragons you encounter in this game, you can actually kill them. Um, they're stupidly difficult to kill. They're quite time-consuming to kill, but you, yeah, you can kill them. So it's going to take you a, an hour and a day, but it's doable. It's doable. There's a secret around. I'm sure I remember there being a secret around here. Like a ledge you can drop to or something, but I cannot for the life remember where exactly it is. Down there, maybe? Yeah, that looks like a ledge I could drop to. I know it's here somewhere, so let's give this a go. Just carefully line this up and try and drop down onto that, see if there's anything down there. Careful. There we are. Oh! Game says no. <laughs> well, screw me then, I guess. Although, in fairness to myself, that was not a long drop. We have literally survived much longer drops than that. With no issue. So I feel a little bit, uh, a little bit aggrieved there, game. In Stonefang Tunnel, we've survived much longer drops with barely any damage. So making that relatively tiny drop an instant kill seems like a bit of a, a bit of a jib to me. If you didn't want me trying to drop down there, don't put a ledge there. That seems fair to me. <laughs> oh well. Never mind, never mind. Like I said, I wasn't expecting to be able to actually do this and actually see the story event, so... At least now I know for definite that's going to happen. No, maybe. I suppose it, it might be possible, actually. If I kill some Black Phantom, and I've already killed a Black Phantom, haven't I? That counted in my favour, though. I should have... Yeah, I've beaten a boss. I've killed a Black Phantom. If I kill the remaining two bosses of this entire zone without dying in body form again, I might actually be able to get pure white. I might actually be able to show you guys the story stuff I was talking about. Hmm. That might be worth actually doing, come to think of it. Now, I do vaguely remember there's supposed to be a way you can get past this early. Can't for the life remember what it is, but yeah, there is supposed to be a way you can get past the blockage ahead of time and go straight to the boss. I've seen people do it, I'm sure I have. Spoke, poke, poke. The gargoyle creatures you fight in this, that's weird twisty rapier thing they've got. It's called a spiral rapier, and it's one of the hardest sodding drops to get in this damn game, short of um, pure bladestone. Bladestone? Yeah, bladestone. The upgrade material that drastically increases um, the amount of scaling you get for dexterity on a weapon. Flamberge. I think I made, yeah, I made that the, uh, the subject of a video on what didn't I? The quest for a more magical Flamberge. That might have been a Twitch video, actually. Whatever. I've played a lot of this game over the years. Either for people or just for my own amusement. I like Demon's Souls. It's, it's a great game. It really, really is. I think it's a lot fairer than uh, people would assume. I like the game. I, I, yeah, I like the game. It's fun. Play it. If you can find yourself a copy for PS3, go ahead. I think you can still buy the digital version on PSN for your PS3. Just there's no more server support, so you won't be able to experience uh, the online function, sadly. Now, I believe people did kind of uh, petition Sony to reactivate the servers. Actually, no one's Sony that, but it. Yeah, Demon Souls is a weird clusterfuck of different IP ownerships. Like from Software, the developers, so they've got basic intellectual property rights. Um, Sony are the they put would they be publishers? Oh, yeah, publishers. So like, you're not allowed to put this game on a non-Sony device in theory. Um, not for money, at least anyway. Um, <laughs> stab. Stab, 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 booty, stab, stab, booty. Um, and then different areas have different distributors, like uh, Namco Bandai with the distributors for Europe and I think most of um, Asia, like Japan, China, all that as well. Well, not China, actually, China would have been something completely different. But they've got Atlas, which are the distributors for North America. Which makes this game an absolute nightmare. It's one of the many reasons that we may never, genuinely never get a remaster of this, sadly. No oh, fuck. Whew. But yeah, so 
there's like there's three or four different companies that all have various ownership rights to different elements of the game. So like in theory, as long as FromSoft have no issues uh, and Sony are willing to do it, they could do a remaster that would again probably have to be PlayStation exclusive. Um, but even if they made it, they would then have to get like Namco Bandai and Atlas to first of all agree to either sell their right to distribute it, or they'd have to make details and said, right, only we're allowed to distribute this game that you've made to our respective territories and no one else's. There's lots of details and multi-layered contracts to work out, so that's something to stack the odds in favour against it ever actually happening, sadly. And irritatingly. To many of us who just want more of this damn awesome game. Ah. No. Oh, well. Ooh, Widow's Lotus, that could be useful. Thank you very much. Yeah, and even though I already know the answer, let's go up here and see if by some miracle that bridge happens to be here. And the answer is no. Yeah. When you've got pure white tendencies, there's a bridge that lets you go further up this. At the top, there is. if I can get this right. There's an it there's Riddell's corpse, basically, I think. Or Rider, whatever you want to say. There's his corpse as an item, and there is a key, if I remember right, that allows you to unlock his cell. Oh wait, no. I think it's if you've got pure white, you can get the item. You can also go and... Just trying to get this right in my own head. Um, you can then go backwards and get to that area I mentioned that's blocked off, unless you've got the right world tendency. And in there you can find the key to his cell amongst some other goodies, I think think that's how it works. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Ooh, new NPC. And the game does not like the uh, Walk Heights of Guidance, does it? It's freaking out quite a lot with me looking at them. Hi. Are you here to fight the demons? If yes. so, then help me escape this place. I am on your side. I believe you. I have come to face the demons. You seem like a trustworthy fellow. Your spiky, evil looking armor, your ability to phase through people like a ghost. Oh, I'm technically a ghost at this point, so it's all good. Am I ever going to have to murder you? Yes, you might have guessed by the voice actor. This is uh, the originator of a uh, Kirk. Well, what have we here? Do you Bye. wish to die so soon? Try what you're saying. I can't hear you from down there. Speak up. What a rude man. <laughs> Ooh, Shard of Archstone too, nice. Um, I have to do a quit and reset to actually get his goodies though. Yeah, he's the game's version of Kirk. If you don't kill him, if you leave him free, he'll appear in the Nexus. I think he gives you a relatively useless item when you go and approach him. Um, afterwards you'll start noticing a lot of the NPCs seem to have gone missing. By which I mean, they turn up dead. And just there are items there. Because the asshole goes around murdering everyone. Um, do you have to let him go back to the Nexus first, or do, is it okay if I kill him here? I can't remember. Long story short, his employer eventually turns up in the Nexus. Fingers you as the person who murdered her little pet assassin. And then he starts giving you the option to do basically his work for her, gives you targets to go kill. Um, I genuinely can't remember what the reward is at the end of it. She gives you something semi-cool, I think, depending on your build. Um, for going and murdering all the NPCs she wants you to kill. No! No, no, please, game. I don't know why you're aiming down in the floor. Rather, ow! It body slammed me. What the hell is this? This is John Cena the creature. Ow! Stop it! Get off me, you freak! Ah, there's a tiny one! It's all scuttly and weird. Oh, there's another big one. Fuck! Fuck! They move a lot faster than I remember as well. Thankfully, the player character moves a lot faster than I remember as well. You really book it in Demon Souls. An obvious similarity that is shared with Bloodborne. Just putting that out there. Speed of character movement and such. Not quite as nimble when it comes to dashing and dodging as the Bloodborne counterparts, but in terms of raw character speed, yeah, it's pretty damn quick. 
It actually slowed things down quite a lot in Dark Souls, made it a bit more get a bit more tactical with your movement and anticipate the delay in reactions and how that would affect your ability to progress. It's all interesting the way the different games approach that aspect of core mechanics. Stab! Ah, straight up the booty hole! Yeah, I forgot how disturbing that was. Not only do they break in half, the big ones that is. Um, but after they've broken, they've got like a, if they've got like even a tiny sliver of health left, they'll break in half to make you think they're dead. And then the top half, after a few seconds, will get up and start coming after you again. It's really, really unsettling and disturbing. Which I think is kind of the goal they were going for, actually. If so, top work, lads. Work to treat. Tentacle. Interestingly enough, the tentacles don't actually do anything. They look ominous and threatening, but they're not, they're not even an environmental hazard. They're literally there just to look weird, to be quite frank, as you walk around in these pools of blood, gathering items and whatnot. Fragon ring, yes, this is the magic level of Yan Told. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, rather. You get the wizard set, you get the best catalyst. The spells that isn't probably in the game. Uh, you get a bunch of spell accessings, and you get uh, magical items, things that increase your magic damage, things that allow you to regen MP. It, like I say, it is the magic level. You probably want to get here as soon as possible if you are playing as a, a mage character. You want to basically bum rush Latria and get as much shit as you can. So you've got all the magic you can get, you rub little hands on. Although ironically, if you're doing a soul level 1 playthrough, this is not the place you're particularly interested in. Outside of freeing Frey clans. You want to bum rush level 1. Um, just until you've freed Freik. And after that, you don't really care about Larcher for quite a while for the rest of that run. If you, all you want is him free so you can access uh, his ability to convert demon souls into spells. And once that's done, you're good and uh, you're good to go, really. Basically, all you want is him to give you the ability to get poison cloud. Which you get from killing. It's not a leechmonger. Dirty Colossus. That's the one. The boss of level five two. Once you've got that spell, you're golden. You are set. Even better, like I say, the first boss of level 5, the Leechmonger, is very, very susceptible to fire. And the start of the game gives you a lot of fire stuff. It gives you, uh, let's say, lots of fire bombs, turpentine, that sort of stuff. You can take those into level 5 1 with a bit of care, because some of the enemies can absolutely wreck your day even at higher levels. Get through that, it's relatively easy, especially if you've got access to the Thief Ring and Soul Fork. To skirt around all of the dangers in level 5 2, get to the boss. Dirty Colossus, again, quite susceptible to fire. Do all that shit, go to Latria, free Freak, come back, get Poison Cloud. Pretty much win the game at that point. You don't need much more than Poison Cloud. Um, like, even the last major, like, proper boss boss of the game, I think even he's susceptible to Poison Cloud. Like, you can hide around a corner. Cast Poison Cloud while he's not looking, as long as you've got the Thief Ring and such equipped. And yeah, he'll die. He'll just slowly whittle away with poison in his system, and that's it. You can go into the, the lair of the most powerful demon in all of Boletaria, as what is, because you haven't leveled, what is quite literally a, just a genuine base level human, who just happens to have Acquired a few useful you know, a few useful talents, a few spells, by studying the magics of demons. So you you utilizing the powers and the tools without taking them into yourself, so you've not been corrupted per se. Can I roll up? No, I can't. <laughs> that'd be a cool little shortcut. Well, not even a shortcut. That'd be a cool thing to do if I could have made that roll, but apparently I cannot. Um. Yeah, the way the game. In certain sections, either foreshadows or quite heavily leans on the idea 
that are absorbing the power of the demons to level up. It's a useful game mechanic, sure, but in terms of like the actual story, you probably shouldn't be doing that. I mean, studying the demons' abilities and mimicking them purely with human ingenuity is one thing, but taking their powers into yourself and corrupting yourself directly with their influence, that's probably not the best plan. I actually like that, the idea that the Soul Level 1 run, in addition to being just like a challenge, from a story standpoint actually has kind of a... kind of an importance and a validity that the other games obviously don't include. I mean, you might be able to apply the same logic to Bloodborne, perhaps? The idea that taking in the blood and influence of the old ones may not be the best plan. And perhaps clever use of contraptions and, again, human ingenuity might be the better option in terms of saving your sanity and such. If you want to remain human, that is. Though in Bloodborne's a whole different discussion about whether remaining quote-unquote human is the goal or not. There's whole hidden fights and endings The sort of count on you coming to the realization that perhaps perhaps the species is meant to go further than its current stage in evolution. So I'm rambling now because I, just, I enjoy the game. Both Bloodborne and Demon Souls have a lot of I say Lovecraftian influence, a lot of discussions about the nature of what it means to be human, where it is appropriate for humans to go and develop power and uh, is the means that you acquire strength as important as the strength you acquire, that sort of thing. It's all very interesting philosophical discussions. As Frank mentioned in the previous episode, um, there are a bunch of people who have acquired demonic powers, and we will see they utilize the powers they acquired in vastly different ways. Um, I can't really discuss a lot without massive story spoilers at this point. Uh, I can't really even really discuss Astraea, but she's a really interesting case. People who've watched my streams in the past know how much I adore her storyline and what it implies and such. Uh, the guy we're currently running through towards, the king in yellow, that I'm going to call Hastur, because he's quite blatantly based on Lovecraft's the king in yellow. Um, he's a really interesting case. He's the power he's taken. He, he externalizes to a great... He uses it to reach far outside of himself, to expand himself beyond the normal mortal confines of a physical person. Um, to directly manipulate the souls of others. Um, to call out their worst elements, their worst instincts. Which matches his backstory, that he's like... Essentially, he was the husband of the former Queen of Latria. He was banished for, to quite frankly, being a bit of a dick. This seems to be the general storyline. I don't think it ever specifies exactly what he did, but he did something sufficient that she basically told him to fuck off. <laughs> um, and he comes back with this power. And uh, it is very interesting. I get the idea that he's probably, considering what he does with his demonic abilities, he's probably something similar that he was doing. He's probably trying to find a way to reach beyond himself using the magic that Latria was at one point at least famous for developing and understanding. Ow! And uh, his wife did not approve of his experiments and such. That's the impression I get, anyway. And he comes back with, like, like I say, the abilities he was probably aiming to develop by himself, now provided via demonic forces. And it's uh, as horrific as she probably feared. We never actually see her. We see, like I say, the illusion of her created um, for the fool's idol. But we never actually encounter her, I don't think. Well, I believe some people have speculated that the, uh, the royal's wife that we encounter in the princess might actually be her. And she's just essentially given up her status and her name in sort of a sense of shame that she wasn't able to prevent Hubby Deer from going on the path that he went on. 
stab. Oh god, it's a lot of you. There's far more of you than I realized. Far more. Jesus Christ. Go away. You're not wanted here. Yeah. Am I gonna get a spiral rapier? No, of course I'm not. I managed to get a spiral rapier like in one playthrough. And that took me literally days. And Black World Tendency, which increases your drop rate. Oh my god, it was insane. The hardest to farm item in the entire damn game. It's not e it's not like drastically overpowered either. I could understand maybe if it had like stupidly good scaling combined with you know really high base damage for a weapon of that type or something like that. Or like really low stamina or something. Just something that made it semi broken. But no, it's it's a, it's a good rape, yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. Especially if you've built for it specifically. But I don't know, it's just... I don't get why From decided to make it as hard to acquire as it is, considering its relative mediocrity. I don't know. It is one of those discussions... not discussions, one of those aspects of uh, the design for Demon Souls that I sometimes question. If you don't love me now, you will never love me again. I still hear you saying, you will never break the chains, never break the chair. Oh god! Oh, he broke the pawn falling! Oh, what a world! Heartbroken. That's what that creature is. And just in case he wasn't weird and disgusting enough. Is now going to fart out demon babbies. Yeah, those weird face things, they apparently came from that. Again, the implication is that Hester was doing weird experiments to birth demons. Because I don't know what that was all about. He had some very, very specific fetishes, what can we say? Can't go up there at all, I don't think. No, it's okay. What time is it? Yeah, I'm pretty much out of time. So we'll get back to the start of the level, which we get just by moving along and dropping and that sort of thing. Uh, we're now yeah, basically back at the start already. But a bunch of stuff is now clear. Ways that were blocked earlier can now be traversed. Uh, stuff I, need. I need to go make use of these souls and do some other odds and ends. And having done so, yeah, it should be fine. Having done so, I shall return and we'll go ahead and try and take on the next boss. The original Gargoyles fight. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. He said clearly not. <laughs> okay guys, until the next time. See you around.